Today I'm working on this watercolor painting of our astro cat uh, meeting up with a pack of royal foxes and running with them across some kind of landscape. It's prompted by the Knight of Wands, uh, which is about working toward a goal so confidently that it inspires others, but so recklessly that you don't care if you trample over the landscape in the process. And this painting to me is a grind painting. Meaning, like, I'm only doing it because I'm adding to the Wild Satellite series and it has to be big enough to fit into this beautiful frame that I already have for it. And I'm reusing a landscape that I love and I'm not really ready to let go of quite yet. Ooh, I also only chose foxes because I've <laughs> become hyper aware of the fact that I don't use dogs that often in my work. When people come up to, you know, my table on the weekends and say, I don't even like cats and you draw a lot of cats. Am I alienating the dog lover community? <laughs> you know what I mean? And even now I'm not even drawing dogs, I'm drawing foxes because it seems like a good compromise to me. They're kind of dog-like. I don't think that I dislike dogs or anything. I think they're very cute. Maybe I've had too many negative experiences around them that I'm just, I don't know, exhausted by it. I don't know. I'm trying not to psychoanalyze that too much, but I kind of am. Anyway, so I'm painting this and I have to realize that the world is just so much different from when I started getting into drawing as a hobby. So I have to assume that there's something new that's driving people to suddenly want to become artists and fast. Because I see a lot of discussion regularly uh, where people just want to know what's the most efficient way to improve your skills immediately. How much studying do you have to do to be good enough uh, to show or sell your art, for example? And the most puzzling question is why are some parts of the art process fun but others are unbearably tedious. You know, is there something wrong with me when that happens? There's always going to be people saying, oh, just enjoy the process. Hobbies are supposed to be enjoyable, that's why we do them. But there's going to be some tedium involved, and there's nothing like wrong or unexpected about that. I personally uh, really love the idea stage, that bit of wishy-washy freedom in the beginning where I'm just like color blocking. And I like that stage at the end where I'm just sticking on the final pretty little details that make everything come together and I feel a sense of achievement for finishing it and making something that I like and I can just stand in the hallway and admire it, you know? I have been, you know, caught by my spouse standing in the hallway staring at this painting that I'm working on and I feel like a sim. But there is this gigantic block in the middle of the process that might be the ugly stage, might be the whole thing. Uh, but it's just straight up work. Like later in this painting, I end up placing a whole bunch of vertical lines in all of the stones just to add a bit of interesting texture to it. And that was not fun. That was actually kind of dreadful. Or sometimes I'll get to the end of a painting and instead of achievement, I just feel disappointed that it didn't turn out right. And I have to make a choice to either like do more tedious work to fix it or start over, or if I just want to cut my losses and scrap it. And either way, I end up putting a bunch of work into this thing that doesn't reward me in any way. So yeah, sometimes making art just sucks. I've noticed recently that some people just, they get started in this hobby and then they just stay in that frustrated mindset all the time. Because, I don't know, I guess they started with this lofty goal to transform immediately into their idealized vision of what an artist is. And the truth is, like, it takes a really long time to master something. And visual art in particular is really tricky for that because the goalpost is always moving, you know? Like, it may not look good, but it's good to someone else, you know what I mean? Like, how do you determine whether you're good enough? Kind of sucks as a motivational reward because in order to, like, stick with something for a long time, you have to have some kind of system in place where you're rewarded often. And so it seems like recently there's a lot of people just um, starting to learn to draw and paint now, but the only thing that they have set up uh, as a reward system is the number of likes and followers on social media. That's how they determine that they are achieving anything, let's say. And so they've turned art into an RPG skill tree where you're just grinding, 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 and then just posting it online to see how many upvotes they get, which sounds 
awful <laughs> because if you fail, you lose confidence and quit really quickly. But if you succeed, you'll always be motivated by those unpredictable external pressures. Pressure to stay the same in order to keep the audience you've built. But you're also pressured to change to attract a new audience, which is a giant paradox. And something that I've been struggling with forever, honestly. I've never been popular. <laughs> and it started when I was a child, so it's just easier for me to keep going. Like, for me, I think it was just a coping mechanism. It passes time when, you know, you're alone. Uh, it's a good form of entertainment. And as an adult, I find that drawing still has really powerful calming effects. Like, if I have to be somewhere that makes me stressed and anxious, if I'm drawing in a sketchbook or on my phone, it instantly relaxes me. So I have like all these little personal rewards set up, not even including, you know, making something emotional that conveys a message and tells a story and I show it to people and you connect with it and like all that stuff. Like even just like the little things like stress relief, feeling like you're being productive when you're just watching a movie. Like there's little things like that that can keep you motivated to keep drawing that isn't going to piss you off when you don't get likes or whatever on social media because learning to draw from scratch it takes time i think it's a lot faster now but still it's it's not as instant as just having fun calming yourself down the little rewards that you get every time you draw something and if you don't get those rewards if you don't have any reason to learn to draw other than to build an audience and get likes and become an idealized version of yourself, you're gonna have a really bad time. And there's no one who's gonna be able to turn it around and pick you up and tell you to keep going. They're just gonna tell you to stop and do something else. Because if it's not fun and you're not having a good time, if you don't like it, you don't have to do it. <laughs> you could be doing something else that does reward you regularly and connects you to the world in some way. I realize that me talking about this is actually super ironic. Literally every week that I make a YouTube video, I question myself if I should just quit because I make videos and it takes a lot of work, a lot of time. So to me, it definitely does feel like a grinding chore that I have to do to get my artwork out there. I know that there are a lot of stressed out, overworked people out there who would look at my channel and think that I'm a failure. And so now I'm sitting here every week thinking, why do I keep doing it? And so I have to remind myself that it's not nothing, but I feel like the internal gratification that I'm talking about when it comes to art is absent there. And so maybe I actually understand these people more than I thought I did. And I somehow not applying that to my own video editing process. So yes, I just wanted to pop back in here and mention that because I feel like if anyone knows me at all, they're going to notice an irony. Internal motivations can be very powerful. That no one will ever be able to tell you to keep drawing. Just like how no one will ever be able to tell me to keep making videos. Because I have to fill in those blanks myself. For myself. I would love to hear your opinion on that and what kinds of things you've set up for yourself to motivate you to keep going or to change things that you don't really enjoy anymore. Because I have listed a few of mine that are not business or audience related that you can't control and you can't uh, force into being. Anyway, like if you liked and thanks for watching.